Welcome everyone to this mini tutorial on safe motion planning using contraction theory. My name is Samit Singh and I'm a research scientist at Google Brain Robotics and the work I'll be presenting today was done at Stanford during my PhD. My co-authors for this tutorial are Hiroyasu Sukamoto at Caltech and professors Lopez, Chung and Slotin. So the topic of today's talk is on a core task in robotics which involves motion planning in cluttered environments and here we're tasked with designing trajectories and feedback policies for robots that take them from some initial location to a final goal region while avoiding obstacles and dealing with any other operational constraints. And so the kind of challenges that we face are on how to compute these trajectories for highly nonlinear systems in real time, how to account for unmodeled uh, disturbance effects such as aerodynamic effects, how to augment our physics derived models with data driven techniques, and then finally how to share our environments uh, with other intelligent agents. So the topic really today that I want to focus on is how to account for unmodeled exogenous effects within the planning architecture. So the way we're going to formalize our problem is to use what is known as a robust motion planning problem. And the idea here is that we're given a control affine, nonlinear control affine representation of our dynamics. And we want to take our robot from some initial region to a goal region. Uh, and we want to minimize some sort of a cost function in this case for instance, the time taken to reach the goal and some penalty on the control effort. And what makes this problem difficult to solve is the fact that we have to compute these solutions in real time in dynamic fashion using receding horizons while respecting various operational constraints. This includes things such as obstacle avoidance, control limit constraints, and on top of everything else, we have to account for the fact that this term W of T is an unmodeled time, uh, time varying disturbance which in our framework, we will always assume to be bounded. And now the guiding principle for our solution is that robustness needs to be factored into the planning, into this planning problem, as opposed to relying on reactive control policies. And so in general, this is a, is, is a, is a quite intractable task to solve. You're trying to find these closed loop policies that can operate at any time and state and respect uh, the operational constraints in unseen environments and still accounting for disturbances. So to relax the, the, the general closed loop policy form, the typical solution approach is to decompose the policy into two parts. So the first part, the nominal part is U star of T. This is computed by assuming unperturbed dynamics. And then this is augmented with a feedback tracking controller K, which tries to maintain your state close to your desired motion plan. And so this feedback controller comes with a guarantee that your state will remain in this invariant tube-like region as you're tracking the paths even in the presence of disturbances. So now you can compute the desired trajectory, this nominal motion plan by using the tube as a safety margin. So you would essentially just inflate the size of obstacles or other operational constraints. Now this notion of using tubes and funnels for motion planning is definitely not unique, but what we're looking for is an automated synthesis method that can compute these feedback controllers and optimize the size of these invariant tube bounds. And we, we want to do this, uh, in this case, using contraction techniques. So I will give a brief introduction into contraction-based synthesis using control contraction metrics, and then how to integrate the results into any existing motion planner. So we've seen uh, a few talks in contraction theory so far, and the overarching theme of contraction analysis is how to go from stability on an infinitesimal scale and how to draw conclusions uh, on stability between any finitely a part pair of trajectories by way of integration. And control contraction metrics essentially generalize this framework to the controlled setting. So let's say I give you a state and control trajectory that satisfies the, these uh, nonlinear control affine form. And then along this trajectory, I can imagine a set of basically of the sequence of variations, delta x, delta u, where you can think about these variations as controlled state and control displacements with respect to infinitesimally closed trajectories, or more formally, delta X and delta U are tangent vectors in the state and control manifolds, in, this, in the tangent space of our state and control manifolds. So we can write down the dynamics for delta X and it'll take this uh, linear time varying form. And now what contraction analysis is trying to do is to find a uniformly positive definite matrix valued function M and an accompanying differential controller where this differential controller is a map from the state control and state tangent space to the control tangent space, where this, 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 this differential controller ensures that the time derivative of this quadratic function in the variations satisfies an exponential stability property. 
namely that v dot is less than or equal to two, negative two lambda v, where lambda is a constant and is termed as the contraction rate. So the picture in your head should be that if if this red curve represents a trajectory, state space trajectory of our system, then this differential controller is essentially stabilizing the infinitesimal variations along this curve. So the picture should be this bowl-like uh, this, this bowl -like diagram, which represents the level sets of our function v. And the variations delta x are essentially are going to lower and lower level sets of the function v as we're following along this trajectory. So if we can find such a matrix value function m and a differential controller delta u, then the matrix function m is termed as a control contraction metric. And the function v, as a natural analogy to control the apnoe functions, is termed a differential control the apnoe function. So as we, as we frequently do in contract analysis, we start with stability on an infinitesimal scale. And now we will use integration to derive stability results on between two finitely apart pair of trajectories. So let's say x star of t is a trajectory that we're trying to track, and x of t is a trajectory that we're currently following. So at every single point in time, we can imagine the set of all curves that connect x star of t to x of t, and we will measure the length of these curves using this script E notation, which we term as the energy of the curve. In this case, simply the integral of our positive definite function v. And at every point in time, we want to find the shortest curve that connects x star of t and x of t, namely the curve that minimizes this energy quantity. And this curve here will just simply be the minimizing geodesic, which in some cases can be shown to be unique. And its energy we will term as the Riemann energy. And now the idea is that by using a specific integral based construction for the feedback controller to compute at x of t, we can show that the Riemann energy itself satisfies this exponential stability property. So we've gone from stability on an infinitesimal scale using the differential Lyapunov function, and then by using integration and a specific form of construction for the feedback controller, we've managed to extrapolate this stability property to the Riemann energy. Now in the, in the actual proof, we, we prove something a little bit more general, which uses Appadini derivatives, but the intuition is exactly the same. So what are the benefits here? The first benefit is that this proof is constructive, which means that we can use the Riemann energy as a control Lyapunov function. So we can simply look for any feedback control k that guarantees that this stability property holds, and the set of all k that ensures this will always be non-empty. So for instance, you can sim simply pick the smallest element. The second advantage is that while we have this stability property in the disturbance-free case, as soon as we add bounded disturbances, we get a result that says that the Riemann energy will always be upper bounded by a constant, which scales proportionally to the level of disturbance and inversely proportional to how aggressive the controller is as measured by the contraction rate, which is a rather intuitive result. And so what this basically means is now that at every single point in time around our trajectory, we can imagine that this Riemann energy-based ball encapsulates all the states in which, uh, in, in which our state is guaranteed to lie in as we're trying to track our motion planned uh, trajectory in the presence of disturbances. Since this, is, uh, this, since this is a state dependent ball because the Riemann energy is essentially is a state dependent metric, this is not very useful, computationally useful for doing things like collision checking in motion planning. So we simply upper bound this using a fixed size ellipsoid. And now we can sweep this ellipsoid along our trajectory and use this as a collision margin uh, when planning trajectories. And now we have a bound that is independent of the trajectory that's being tracked. And the result itself is more general than th techniques like feedback linearization. In terms of the final advantage of how we want an automated synthesis technique, it turns out that simply by looking at the dual metric, which is the inverse of the CCM, we can write down the, the conditions that characterize the CCM properties as a set of linear equalities and matrix, linear matrix inequalities in the matrix W. And so these are functional constraints, so these need to be satisfied everywhere in the state space. And one popular finite dimensional uh, tractable formulation of these constraints uses sum of squares programming, which is a technique that we've used in our past papers. So that as an example, um, I'll actually show how this entire pipeline works, but you can roughly decompose the entire robust planning framework into two components. On the offline stage, given the representation of your dynamics, you run this offline computation of um, computing a CCM metric along with the ellipsoidal two bound just once computationally offline. 
And then online, given the metric itself, we can and the and the two bound, we can generate any nominal uh, motion plans by using the two bound for things like obstacle inflation and inflation of any other constraints. And then now we can track these trajectories using our CCM derived feedback controller. So as an example, uh, here is the is the entire methodology working on a quad rotor system. And what I'm showing here is a depiction of the forward motion plan as well as the tube margin that was used. Uh, for inflation of the obstacles and therefore as long as the tube is free of the obstacles and we're using the feedback controller derived from the contraction result, we're guaranteed that a quad rotor will also be collision free. So there are some limitations of this approach um, and I want to point out some interesting new future exciting research directions that are being explored currently. And the idea here is the first big limitation is that we assume that the dynamics are known. And so one of the ways that this has been explored uh, on relaxing this assumption includes how to use data driven, how to, how to learn models from data and how to regularize these uh, models using contraction techniques. Uh, there's also been work into looking at universal adaptive control by doing concurrent parameter estimation and stabilizing control with CCMs and then using neural networks to in fact learn the metric itself from finite set of sample trajectories. Uh, the second limitation comes from the fact that the controller uh, needs to compute the geodesic, the minimizing geodesic between the desired state and the actual state at every point in time. And this in general can be a more complicated computation as the state space dimensionality increases. So some of the ways that this has been uh, tackled is by replacing the metric and the controller using neural networks. Uh, another technique is to simultaneously solve for the connecting path between the desired trajectory and the actual trajectory where this path converges to the minimizing geodesic and then by using a specific form for the dynamics representations um, which allows you to actually compute the feedback controller in close form. And then the final limitation is that disturbances are treated somewhat conservatively in the sense that the analysis and synthesis is done in the absence of knowledge of disturbances and then we do the, uh, we, we compute the invariant bounds and the tube bounds in a post hoc uh, fashion. So some recent work has actually shown by that, it, by accounting for the disturbance dynamics within the CCM computation, we can compute what are known as robust CCMs and thereby compute much tighter tracking bounds. So with that, I'll end this, I'll end this here and open the floor for questions. Thank you.